Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Alan, and on behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, because of the position we're in and, and the fact that this show is on now all over the country and because of the Internet, it's on really all over the world, we get calls and emails and messages from all over, and it just seems that there's tremendous change and turbulence going on for so many people now that it's really a time that the necessity for us to really experience the depth of our lives, to, to experience truly who we are, is coming more, more and more into not a question of that we'd like to do it, but we, that we need to do it. That that experience of truth, of love, of oneness, of consciousness is a necessary thing for us to have that experience now. And for, for, for us here at Bridging Heaven and Earth, what we've been really feeling so clearly is that with this turbulence going on, with this change, a real necessity is that whatever spiritual path you use, Buddhism, Hinduism, meditation, uh, dance, uh, singing, whatever it might be, Judaism, Christianity, whatever way you can go into that deepest part of yourselves, now's the time it has to be done. So, so what we've been saying is that what has to happen now is that depth has to be reached and we have to remain flexible. Because what people have thought throughout the history is that this is going to be a time when there's going to be tremendous turbulence in the physical world in terms of maybe earthquakes or uh, floods or, or things like that, our feeling is is that the experience is going to be an internal turbulence, an internal shaking up of our foundations. And when that's happening, flexibility and, ex and an experience of the true depth of who we really are, of that oneness, of that love that, that we are all made of, that we truly are, now is the time that we have to experience that. And on tonight's show, we have people whose lives are dedicated to having that experience, once again, because basically that's what Bridging Heaven and Earth is about. It's dedicated to the oneness, and what we try to do is find people, wherever they are, wherever they are in the world, to try to get them here to do this live show, and, and the response has been just unbelievable, how people come from all over the world. Tonight we have Craig Russell with us, who's one of the foremost spiritual teachers and healers in Canada. And he came down specifically from Canada to be on Bridging Heaven and Earth, which for most of you know is in uh, Santa Barbara, California. Uh, and Craig is the founder, uh, the co-founder of a spiritual path called Soul Journey. And that path is, again, to bring us into that love, into that consciousness of the One. And with him tonight, who's going to play behind him on one of uh, Craig's uh, sourcing messages or channeling, as we've seen before in some ways, uh, Paul Armitage is the co-founder of Soul Journey. He's an uh, inspirational musician and a celestial music channel. And we're just honored that he too came down with Craig from, from Canada to be with us tonight. And then we have also Brian David Anderson, who's a spiritual teacher, a healer, uh, and he's going to perform uh, chakra toning and balancing and we're going to show you the cover of his extraordinary new book Rhythms of Nature. So what we normally do at this time is we'll just start and have a, a short meditation just to get us in that feeling of, of the one, go as deep as you can. If you don't know a meditation technique, just close your eyes, follow your breath. If you do, for the next minute or so, just go into that experience as deep as you can. Just close your eyes and come with me into that experience and then we're going to start an extraordinary show. So please join me. Wow, thank you. So we're going to begin tonight's show with uh, Brian David Anderson doing chakra toning and chanting. And he's going to go through, he, we have two sets with Brian tonight, and he's going to go through the, all the main chakras, and some in the first set and some in the second set, and he'll describe them. So this is uh, chakra toning and chanting performed by Brian David Anderson. Whenever you're ready.
The seven vortexial energy centers of the body, also known as chakras in the Far East, move light particles in and out of our bodies. These light particles move from this dimension into other dimensions and from other dimensions into this dimension. By balancing the chakras, we are truly bridging heaven and earth. The optimum way of moving these light particles is balancing the chakras with toning, sounds, colors, and visualized symbols and geometric patterns. Some say when balancing the chakras, you should start at the top or the crown. Some say at the base or root. I feel and believe the optimum way of balancing the chakras is to start at the center sun and the focal point of the human experience, and that is the heart chakra. The heart chakra is associated with grief, with joy, with pain, with nurturing, how we nurture ourselves and how we nurture others. However, the heart chakra is associated with one of the most important aspects of our entire human existence, and that is unconditional love. The symbol of the heart is the yin and yang symbol in the Far East, the cross, not the Christian cross, but the straight cross, and the flower and the lily. The color is that of gold or yellow, and the sound is that of hue. Join me now in balancing the heart chakra with the sound of hue. When starting with the heart chakra, now moving out and going to the next chakra, which is that of the solar plexus. The solar plexus are located six inches above the navel and just below the rib cage. And the emotion is that of protection, fear, power. And the sound is that of raw. The color is that of Kelly Green, and the symbol is that of the oval. Join me now to balance the solar plexus chakra with the sound of raw. colors, the tones, and the sound are all up to the individual. There is no set any type of rules whatsoever in balancing the chakras. You, the individual, have the choice of the sounds and colors that you choose to balance your chakras with. And now in closing, again, the heart chakra and that of you, and we'll be back later on to do more balancing of the chakras. Wow, thank you, Brian. That was fantastic. So we're on the set here with Craig. Thank you for coming coming down from Canada to be with us tonight. It was Hello, really Alan. fantastic. So 
you're involved in this thing called Soul, Soul Journey. Now, how did that get started? I mean, that, that is what the path that you, you've been out teaching and experiencing mm -hmm. yourself. Why don't you talk about that a little? Well, I suppose it began when, in 1987, I, be I began to have extraordinary experiences in my meditations, uh, experiences in my mind and in my brain, and uh, a different movement, uh, starting to have inner visions uh, during meditations. And this was brought about after 18 years of studying a path known as Doctor, known as the Infinite Way, authored by Dr. Joel Goldsmith. And in that process in 1987, uh, in deep inner meditations, my inner vision blew open literally. And uh, in that place, I also opened uh, to that to an inner voice, uh, an inner presence that uh, that Dr. Goldsmith had taught all of us as students to work with. And uh, so I began to experience a whole inner world in 1987 and 88. And in that inner world of communion with a, a higher power and inner presence, uh, did the presence of seeming guides, other voices seem to be there. And uh, very shortly I came to understand that those guides were beautiful angels and just started an inner communion and relationship with uh, one angel specifically called Akasha. And uh, then Akasha appeared at my bed uh, one night, and uh, that was when I had my first uh, physical uh, visual experience with the outer sight of the angels, so that I myself had that uh, tangible outer experiences that we often seek to have, as, as well as the inner experiences. And Akasha began to speak of, of uh, a greater consciousness, a suppressed knowledge, and uh, a mission that I had chosen to, to be part of a, a new paradigm of, of teachers and guides who were willing to take knowledge that has been suppressed too long out to the world. And uh, with the commitment that the angel Akasha, she would be there to assist me in, in sourcing this knowledge that had been long time suppressed that would help humankind gain a, a greater vision and greater personal f uh, f freedoms in their lives. So it was uh, in, uh, already in 1988 to 1993, 94 that I worked one on one with the angels. I started with some, uh, doing some meditation groups, uh, started sourcing messages. Uh, people started having very tangible experiences of, of angel presence. And then uh, the angel Akasha guided me to meet uh, Paul Armitage. And of course, behind coincidences, there's generally um, an angel. And uh, in the creating, uh, in meeting Paul Armitage, did uh, Akasha ask to begin the work of Soul Journey, uh, which was to, be, to offer um, that stage in which uh, knowledge and also a very radiant energy, a very, very loving presence together with, with sound and sound rays could express through music. And uh, Soul Journey was to be uh, perhaps a new model, a, a new working model of, of an unorthodox, unorthodox path and, and an unorganized path uh, to reach out, to reach the heart of, of humanity and uh, to offer very, very practical tools to enlightenment. And, and and the path is of love. The path is mm. yes. It's 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 of love. It's of the heart. Um, we call it the path of the four E's. Uh, it's one of uh, one of excellence, one of elegance, um, through an ease and through an effortlessness. And uh, what we, were the four again? Ease, I ease twice. Yeah, ease, effortlessness, elegance, and excellence. Oh, okay. Right. Those are our four E's right. in in Soul Journey and. Uh, uh, the angels explained to me that there are many who are out there who are, are seeking to personally empower themselves but not, are not necessarily doing it through a spiritual approach so that even though they're learning the power of positive thinking and dynamic ch choices that generally there are still voids in their lives uh, that need to be filled and and on the other side of it there are those who are out, out there seeking their spirituality seeking answers and uh, yet when it comes to the outer world don't have that fulfillment the and harmony and the balance that's right and yeah. also the outer world an outer world that even includes a material world 
world that is that is a wonderful reflection of, of the inner beauty that can manifest as as health in the body, rich relationships, uh, uh, wealth, uh, and uh, so what we do in Soul Journey is is to present ways and means that that each of us can begin to access a higher power and an inner power and and of course this has been a century of knowledge and and the knowledge of a higher self as in in many human potential movements is is be, is becoming quite acceptable um, but how often and how well do we access that higher self in our lives mm -hmm. uh, how do we access the higher self if each of us do have this beautiful perfect higher self that is all loving how do we bring that through and so in Soul Journey I, I source those messages that come through for, as a collage of my own higher self um, that is a demonstration of the potential every person can do and uh, and of course there's only really one guru in Swami and Soul Journey and that's the heart that is within each person if we can that in essence is the same mm -hmm, absolutely right. absolutely and if we can turn people back to that and then begin a process of, of showing and sharing with people how uh, there are certain things the students can begin to do so that they have tangible experiences of this inner presence or or greater consciousness or or Christ self or Buddha self because uh, at the very least we've realized that it's not about a name it's about a feeling and well, not everybody, uh, <laughs> yeah, not everybody. Not everybody. Yet, yes uh, this is certainly where we'd like to work towards I'm and uh, so in in the six years and we're going to our sixth season with Soul Journey we're finding we're att attracting students who are very serious in their life serious about their spirituality and and uh, with that is the goal within Soul Journey that people's lives might fulfill themselves there's there's nothing to join there's a uh, um, no membership and even though our work is going international now it's it, it simply offers a stage in which people can collectively come together, uh, honor honor the transformation that is going on themselves, and certainly with a completing a, a hundred years of evolution on the planet, many people f with different viewpoints are are beginning to understand that something is something is happening on the planet. Something is is beginning to stir, and depending on what approach your mm -hmm. your faith comes from, right. you might have a different uh, feeling as to what is coming. But I feel we're entering into a millennium with uh, some wonderful opportunities, and how might we best align that and come out of fear and come into the expression of love, uh, and so that is a practical experience. So often that state of enlightenment has, that is the, the holy grail that one seeks, can leave one's experiences um, being less than. Uh, we met up a lot of people on the spiritual path who have very difficulty uh, achieving success and uh, one of the golden goodies that have come through the messages that I bring through is that there's really nothing spiritual about a poverty consciousness and and so involved in that bigger picture is about saying yes to life and and how might my life fulfill itself if 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 I could just maintain that desire that my life fulfill itself on all levels and so what we try to present in soul journey is is showing how choices, showing how a communication can take place between peoples in which way they can exercise choice and have the proof themselves. And to make it a lot easier and to make that int integrating is Paul's music and when working with the angels we realize how important sound and music are we learn of the great angelic kingdoms and and the great uh, realms of sound and we've learned that as beautiful celestial music is played there is an actual layering of celestial energies beautiful harmonic energies that that invisible forces will um, uh, will share and make part of the whole experience so that uh, when people leave back to their homes they're taking that experience with them so when uh, the angel Akasha uh, when she guided me to meet Paul and when we saw what it was that we were to do it was uh, it was a joy in my heart that I didn't need to do the work alone right, right. that I had yeah. someone to to get up and do this work with and and to uh, 
uh, we do a lot of inner work so that uh, with the premise that uh, what is within is creating the conditions outside and so to have Paul participating and providing that very live music so that during guided meditations or sacred journeys it allows for some profound change at very deep inner levels for yourself and for the people participating absolutely absolutely and uh, and when we look at the lives of the students, when I say students, I'm not necessarily saying students of soul journey, but rather simply students of life. Mm -hmm. um, when I see the lives and the transformations there that are taking place, I know that the work is working. And uh, sometimes I think of soul journey as, as a bridge. And, and I think there's a greater jewel out there. And perhaps that jewel is life itself. Sure. And yes. yes. Yeah. And so if we can create that bridge, and and without naming uh, saying to someone your life wants to fulfill itself and I can't tell you what that looks like but I can, might be able to share with you some ideas as how you can bring that about and uh, so this leads people to those experiences that they have this greater joy and uh, that's that's just a little bit a part of the work that uh, that soul journey uh, is doing out there and perhaps I'd also just like to say that what I do when I source is I, I feel that that's a potential each person can do. Uh, at the age of 14, I joined the work of The Infinite Way, and that was a path authored by Dr. Joel Goldsmith. And after Edgar Casey, Goldsmith was America's foremost healers. And in the 50s, 60s, uh, even in the late 40s, Goldsmith was healing anywhere between 200 to 700 people a day. And, and uh, a busy fellow. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and he, he did that all through a state of knowing, a higher truth. Uh -huh. And so what Goldsmith taught all of us was to how to enter into this inner place where a, a tangible inner voice could, could communicate with us, a higher consciousness, an inner feeling. And it's through the years of studying the Goldsmith material that, that I finally opened that, that holy grail, if you will, and came to that wellspring of inner knowledge. And it's in that wellspring that the angel started communicating with me. And uh, the angel of Kasha, she's a lovely angel. She's the angel of the rose, uh, the, the rose pink ray, which is uh, supposed to be the ray of the divine mother energy, the divine feeling side of life. and these angels have proclaimed themselves as shepherds of the Christ and ask us to have a higher understanding of what they mean when they say Christ that yes there is a man who came to the earth and became the Christ but but, but that Christ is the is an essence of our being as a is a potential that every human being can strive for and so they come to earth with many other lights who are coming to earth at this time and as shepherds of the Christ their devotion is for us bringing forth our inner light and uh, and when we invite the angels into our homes to work with us they're they're perhaps not quite ready to make themselves visible yet but they are quite ready to leave lots of tangible evidence that they've been around i remember in the early years of working with the angels i would hear them walk into the house and we would hear them on the roof protecting us we'd hear them walking into the live into the living room and i'd i'd sense that they were there and then they'd sit down on the sofa and i'd see the sofa sofa decrease where someone was sitting wow. and i and and part of me would get really frustrated and then I'd say why don't you just show yourself you know you're, right. you're showing me this part of your tangible evidence but uh, uh, essence but uh, the angels have said there's a cosmic hour coming and they themselves must obey uh, certain universal laws in terms of making themselves visible but they don't want our adoration um, they're servants of the one creator and they're co they've come to the earth to, to help all of us come back into shining our light and and gaining whole new freedoms into they're part of a, of a higher collective reality that is so desiring to restore truth here to this planet and to provide some means and ways that people can come out of fear and into a, a, a level of love and uh, there's been so many so much knowledge on this planet that has been so often repressed through uh, different various channels if you will even in the Orthodox Christian world there's been a high level of suppression of Who greater truth mm. oh, God never yes. there yes and and uh, 
There's been one, many wonderful teachers sent to the earth, Jesus the Christ and, and our beloved Buddha and uh, uh, Krishna, wonderful teachers and religions formed around many of these teachers. And it, generally, if you look through the annals of history, you'll see that within three to four hundred years of the departure of any great teacher has their teaching begin to change so that a thousand years later, two thousand years later, the teaching doesn't look anything like what the original teacher taught on earth. I thought it was 20 minutes, honestly. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously, because people aren't having that experience, mm -hmm. so it's got to be skewed yes. right off the gun. I mean, it looks like it's it's close for a while, but then it's getting, you know, it's just getting further and further off. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can't really see it till many years down the road. But if you're not having that experience, then, it's, then it becomes a religion, mm -hmm. or a habit, or a ritual, yes. rather than an experience, and a, and a joy and a manifestation of love. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and I, I, I feel that that all of us are the Creator's temporary teachers to each other, and that all of us are holding a jewel within ourselves, and every human being has the potential. I've often said that you'll never find God in this world unless you find a human being who's willing to bring their light, willing to shine their light. And you find a human being who's willing to shine their passion, their light, their heart, their love, there you have a person who's expressing God in this world. And I feel that we have record millions of people who are beginning to do that now. They're willing to be big and, and brave and, and shine their light. And in Soul Journey, if we can be part of that, of, of showing ways that, that each of us can do that, then perhaps uh, that bridge that we're trying to build uh, is, is a successful one. So when you have like, like over this next period, uh, this is, we're filming August 6, 1999, the next few days you'll have a, a, a workshop, a seminar for two days in LA. Now, just quickly, because you know we want to get to your uh, uh, sourcing message mm -hmm. a little later, but uh, how, what would transpire you know, specifically during this period, this two-day period? Would there be a lot of sourcing messages? There'd be a lot of Paul playing music and... A combination of that, and along with that, uh, guided inner journeys. Uh, we all dedicate some time to going within. We really work with the emotional body, and it's so important that the emotional body is healed. This is where most of the obstacles are, so there's a certain amount of the time is dedicated to that. Uh, and and I quite often we'll take a focus like this. Our first time in Los Angeles, our focus is love and abundance, um, because it's so important that those who are coming into the light and radiating their light uh, are given tools and, and keys that they can turn and and manifest greater values of success in which and including money and all good things in their lives. It's right. I mean, everything's there ab for us. Absolutely, and in the Garden of Eden, in a way, yes. we just don't know it. That's right. And so, uh, how do we how do we pluck that true that fruit? Right. How do we eat right. it? And so, and so that our lives are fulfilled. That's a part of um, the vital expression that will happen in any workshop is, is to make sure that we are sharing some very important information. And always in, in a workshop setting, there will be what we simply call universal laws forgotten by humankind that have been a long time suppressed, that when this information comes through and people start working with this information, do they see the results in themselves? We always say in Soul Journey, we don't ask you to believe anything. Here are some things that you can go out into your life and try. And if you're willing to try them, you might just find the results yourself and the proof that these things, that these things are true. We've been asked to believe too much, and perhaps if we can just set aside what we believe and experience. That's yeah. right. And then it would be for it's us. It's yes. ours now. Yes. Right. Yes. All right. So I think now what we'll do is uh, go back to Brian, and he'll finish the chakra toning and chanting. Uh, and also, uh, Brian is the author of Rhythms of Nature. It's a new book. It's probably will be available in your stores pretty soon. So, uh, whenever we're ready, Brian, chakra toning and chanting, Brian David Anderson. We are like particles. This is not a metaphor. This is not a symbol. 
we literally are light particles at the molecular level. There are no such things as atoms, electrons, neutrons. At the molecular level, we are light particles moving in a holographic manner. And the light particles are constantly in a state of flux in and out of our bodies, above the speed of light and below the speed of light. And the system that moves these light particles is known as the chakras in the Far East. These vortexual energy systems moving through the heart chakra and the various other centers. But the human experience, the human pivot point, is that of the heart chakra. And it truly is the bridging of heaven and earth. And the heart chakra, with the sound of hue, chakra, color of Kelly green, symbol of the oval, and the sound of Ra. from the heart again, the throat chakra. Do you speak your truth? How do you communicate? The throat chakra is associated with that of the chalice and the color of sky blue. And its sound is that of ha. Are you speaking your truth? Are you communicating properly? That is the issues and the tissues of the throat chakra and the sound of Pa. Associated with the color of pink, being in the pink, basically because it is controlling those organs of the stomach and the intestines. And its symbol is that of the triangle with the top cut off. Its location is approximately one inch below the navel and known as the cleansing chakra. Do you feel clean? That is the issue in the tissue. And the sound is that of bomb. The third eye chakra is located between the eyes and its symbol is that of the six-pointed star or the butterfly and its color is that of indigo. Its issue has to do with what is your vision? How are you looking to the future? What is your intuitive level? And when we're disconnected, many times that is schizophrenia. It's the basis of that. Its sound is that of awe. Its color is indigo. Join me now in balancing the third eye chakra, the vision of the future, with the sound of awe.
base or root chakra, located at the pubic bone. Its symbol is that of the square. Its color is that of the orange. Its issue is reproduction, rage, anger, how we reproduce, how we express our literally our physical vitality with anger, with reproduction, and of course, with unconditional love. Its symbol, again, is that of the square, its color is that of orange-red, and its tone is that of wah. The seventh chakra, located at the top of the head, known as the crown chakra, is associated with all that ever was and all that ever is. And when we're disconnected from all that ever there is or ever was, that can lead to psychosis. However, when we are totally in connection with all that ever is, all that ever was, total bliss. The color of the crown chakra is purple. Its symbol is that of the circle or sphere with water flowing through or raindrops, whichever your choice is. And its sound is that of OM. Again, the symbols and the colors and the sounds can all vary. You as the individual have the choice. What do you want? What do you want to use? There is no set rules or regulations in, as far as balancing the chakras. However, I feel very strongly that beginning any type of chakra balancing should start with the center sun and that of the heart chakra. And now we leave you with the sound of you. Wow, thank you, Brian. That was fantastic. So I don't know what you guys felt out in, this, out in television land, but in the studio here, it was just very powerful. So before I forget, uh, if anybody's interested in, in Brian, where he's chanting or toning, or his book, or where he's going to be doing workshops or seminars, or Craig, or Paul, who you haven't seen yet, or actually haven't heard or seen or play or anything like that, uh, please call me at Alan at 805-687-2053. Uh, I can give you whatever information you want. Uh, uh, Craig and Paul are doing a workshop tomorrow. Uh, that's August 7th and 8th in, in Los Angeles, California. So if it's after, in 1999, if it's after that, don't call me with that workshop. But I'll know other workshops where they'll be at. So call me at Alan, 805-687-2053. Okay, so I'm back on the set. Uh, Craig, so why don't you describe a little bit about what a sourcing message is? I think you just talked about that a little before, but why don't you mm -hmm. like set the tone, and then All we'll right. go into that. All right. In I use the word sourcing. Uh, it simply re reflects um, particular my own path in particular as I go into that place of surrendering to that love. Uh, I am also surrendering that place that we show up in most of the time, our rational thinking mind. And it's in that place that I open to an oasis of a, of a greater consciousness. And in that consciousness, it is a collage of a message that can come directly from my own beloved uh, great God self, the inner presence uh, 
and other times it comes from the angel Akasha that I work with. And uh, I think of it as sourcing because when I go into that place of surrendering, uh, I am literally pulled up. I do have those sensations of being pulled up as if being in an elevator. Uh, I feel the uh, coiling of the seventh chakra opening up and uh, that deep involuntary breath that uh, um, there is this presence and uh, it, it's not that some entity is speaking through me which is why I don't use that word channeling mm -hmm. uh, but rather that I see that I am sourcing a higher consciousness and we do know that greater beings of light whether they're angels or ascended masters uh, are able to communicate through the life stream the upper chakras and, and able to communicate through the greater consciousnesses as one unified mind so it's uh, it's that place that that I source from uh, and generally uh, the greater consciousness or those to be who are assisting us here are quite aware of everything we're doing here on the earth and they generally have something planned okay good so I guess what we'll do now is uh, Craig is going to do the sourcing message and we're going to have live music by Paul Armitage uh, they're the co-founders of the soul journey uh, path so uh, it's yours Hello precious hearts, today I have prepared a message that speaks of a return to love and I would like to simply say in the short time that I have with you, fail not your light on earth, fail not your light on earth, no that at this hour there are thousands and thousands of beautiful beings of light whether you think of them as angels or other beings of light there are thousands who are descending into the earth to assist every human being you know precious heart there are many types of angels much greater than what the Orthodox Church has left you believing. And there's one specific group of angels, and I like to call them the listening angels. And to every serious student of life who communes into their own heart, whether you call that prayer or a deeper communion or communication, are these listening angels always, always listening? and they are here to assist you, to open your life to your greatness. There is within you a spark of love, there is within you a spark of light. You were born with it into this world. Will you fire? Will you stir that spark of light? Will you allow it to grow? I ask you to no longer willing to stand in the shadows of others and I ask that you be willing to no longer create your own shadows in your life but that you would know that there is an inner light that is within you and this inner light as you love it and acknowledge it communicate with that light will those listening angels 
who are ever there assist you in greater freedom in your life. In 1975, a cosmic thing of a great light took place on your planet. Very few other than some small pockets of peoples knew of this event. It was called a harmonic convergence. In 1987, another one took place. In these two harmonic convergence, did cosmic light from varying sources converge onto your planet. And when this happened, it so quickened life on Earth. And in that quickening came the collapse of communism, the fall of the Berlin Wall. Did nations begin to sign treaties one with the other? Did America herself heal her wounds? A great quickening of light. 1975, 1987. On August 11th of this year, 1999, comes forth another harmonic convergence, a great quickening of light onto this planet. Every heartbeat shall feel this quickening, for a great window shall open, and through this window from various sources, from your own Earth's sun, and from a sun that is beyond that sun, from a secret love star that has overlighted many great teachers and past civilizations, and from the very center of the earth, from higher dimensions, planes of bliss, and from your own sister planets, is coming in cosmic rays of light. And within those cosmic rays of light is a hierarchy of intelligence, a hierarchy of love, that holds within itself an intent to raise the heart of humanity, to continue the healing, to quicken the electron within the human brain. As the quickening of light descends upon the planet and envelops the human race, will that light so expand everything on the planet as well as all that is going on within individuals? And one of those things that the, the divine hierarchy of light has planned for this system is that human beings will begin to take greater responsibility for their lives that greater numbers will accept that what is going on within oneself dynamically is affecting the world they experience outside themselves. There are very few who dare to create their own realities. In your world that is a term that is often spoken that speaks of a consensus reality, a, a reality that is experience that is the consent of millions of human beings through various belief systems. It is often said in metaphysics that you create your own personal reality. Well, I would suggest that very few are doing that. I would suggest that that is a potential. And with the great quickening that is coming onto the planet this year, that shall, this window shall last to the, that wonderful year 2011, so shall that light, as it quickens inside you, offer for you and your brothers and sisters a new place of insight and revelation that you can begin to see the dynamics between your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, your convictions, your fears, your loves, your passions, and the world that you experience outside yourself, so that you will begin to have those personal aha, I see, I get it. There is a spark of love, there is a light that is inside you. Fail not this light. How shall you bring it forth into this earth? By taking more time for you, by nurturing yourself, by making a choice to live from your heart by making a choice to say yes to life every day. I'd like to leave you a gift, precious hearts. Humankind, having watched so closely at this hour, 
by those who only want to assist, want to help. Your life is so much grander and majestic than anything you could intellectually imagine at this time. I speak of an oasis of love, for it speaks of the unimagined potential that you can ascend to, that you can rise to. But I will leave you with one golden key here this, this hour. And that is if you will hold within your heart the true desire that your life, that your life, all of it, even that which is beyond your ability to comprehend, that that life fulfill itself. If you could just hold on to that desire, let it be your dream. And remind yourself every day, I desire that my life fulfill itself on every level, on every level. And for those who are listening, angels, those on high, I accept your help. I accept your assistance. I am willing that my life fulfill itself. And if you will hold to that desire and let it well up in you, so shall you find that within your desire, within your feeling side of life, is the very fuel of life itself. And as you say yes to that life, the angels will come and they will assist you that you can begin to have new personal freedoms. Fail not your own light and hesitate not to call upon the angels for they are here to serve, they are here to protect you until so you can learn to do those things for yourself from the heart of the Creator from the heart of all that is light, I say to you, precious heart, I love you, I bless you, and I thank you, and I am Akasha. Beautiful. Thank you, Paul, Kasha, whoever <laughs> who's moving around in there. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Alan. So how do you feel coming out of that? Do you feel I feel so wonderful. I feel so charged and it's it's always been that way as long as I surrender to the love. Uh, if I try to get in there with my own stuff, uh, it doesn't happen. And as long as I just and that's, surrender... And that's the truth the rest of the day, too. Absolutely. <laughs> and if we could just live that way 24 hours a, a day, uh, how, might, how different our lives might be. But when you work with your inner power, when you work with that inner presence that lives within you, and you, and you say yes to these higher forces that want to help, um, they leave you so highly charged, so filled with so much joy, so much life, fully present. Uh, um, I have no feeling of being spaced out. I'm fully present in my body. And that's what we need to do is we need to stay in our bodies. We've been put on We're Earth. Here. Absolutely. And, uh, it's, no beer it's, and uh, it's not a good thing to check out or, or to, to literally get out of the way so that you're so much out of the way that you're out of your own body. Right. And so, uh, uh, yes. Um, the heart expands. Uh, that beautiful light that we all have in our hearts expands throughout the body and leaves you feeling so exhilarated. Uh, I I could just say that I live to I live to live in that place 24 hours a day, but I'm not there yet. But you're working on it. Yes, that's I, uh, I think it's happening to us all. And again, you know, every time we come to this point in the show, it's like, wow, it's almost over. I can't believe it. So just thank you all for coming. Thank you for all the, the letters, the calls, the emails, the uh, all the help everyone's getting to get Bridging Heaven and Earth on all over the country. Uh, 
If you need any information, 805-687-2053. We love you. Good night. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye now. Please come again next week.